another tiring day. Um, yeah, so what happened yesterday? It was our maiden voyage. And by maiden voyage, I mean like the first time we just moved the boat. Um, so we were going from a day, for a day sail from Eastbourne back to Eastbourne. Um, so we started up the, well, we did some engine checks. We checked um, the, the water filter, got mm -hmm. some seaweed out of there. What else did we do? Check the oil levels. Yeah. Um, the bilges. Belt tension. Belt all, tension. All the yeah. usual wobble stuff. Um, and then we came out of our berth, we went into the lock. We got the lock to ourselves this time, so that was quite nice, instead of there being like 19 boats in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then we came out of the lock. We could see it was a bit, it was going to be choppy. And we knew from Anne Marie that it was like quite choppy the day before as well. Um, I came below deck to have a quick wee. Um, when I came back above deck, Rob and Ollie looked a bit tense <laughs> and I could feel the boat slamming as I was in the heads. I could just feel this like up and slam, up and slam. So I was like, right, okay, it is, it is a bit, bit touchy out there, but you know, we've, we've, you know, we're okay with that. Um, we're used to sailing in some stronger winds now, but why did you look so tense? Well, once you get out the protection of the harbour and into the actual channel, um, it was obviously not protected at all and it was, it was extremely windy, it was 35 knots, which was way more than forecast, but you know, that's what forecasts are. Um, and in the mouth of the harbour is really choppy and you've got to like punch through that kind of breakwater really. Mm -hmm. um, as you say, we were moving up and down and hammering up and down um, and then Ollie was just bringing some fenders in, I was on the helm, and all of a sudden the engine just cut out uh, and therefore we had no power and we were bl being blown by the 35 knots of wind towards like some bloody awful rocks and we were within three boat lengths of these rocks because it was quite a tight entrance. Um, so I shouted over to Ollie, Ollie, the engine stalled, he looked at me, he went, what? I went, the engine's cut out and he, that's the first time I've seen him look not chilled it's, it's out. It's very chill. <laughs> because we, as I say, we were being blown over. By the time he got over, that was that was down to two boat lengths. And he moved we were just quick. thinking shit. <laughs> um, but the engine restarted, um, and we start. We, we managed to get steerage back and started to punch through the waves again, and the engine cut out again. So this was probably the worst point at which to kind of lose power. Um, so how many seconds away from the rocks do you think we were? I think maybe like 20 seconds. Okay. So the engine did come back on and, and we managed to like punch out. And then once we get out into the, the sea, um, we're all right because then we can use the sails to um, to steer the boat essentially. But yeah, that's why well, that's why I was white. That's why Ollie was white. <laughs> yeah. Because that was that was a nightmare. I must admit it was it was squeaky bum time. Yeah, so maiden voyage, we were about 20 seconds away from a mayday because Mayday, even though we were probably going to be okay if we hit the rocks, the, it was if the boat's in danger, if you're in danger of losing the vessel, then that's still a Mayday. Yeah. So, so we, so we radioed, oh radioed the harbour and just told them that the engine had cut out and just stand by that we might need a, an immediate lock back in um, and obviously to try and get a work boat um, yeah, ready just, just in case we needed it. But then it was all right, you know, it stayed on. Um, but then we were scared of turning the engine off um, because once we got out into the channel, which was again 35 knots of wind, um, and it was like a four foot swell, so it was it was extremely tough sailing, wasn't it? It was. We managed to well, we tried to get the sails up. The rigging the, was all there were all kinds of issues with the rigging anyway. So Ollie was an absolute superstar. He sorted everything out, um, you know, just so that basically the sails will go up and down now without any kinks, any like little demons that were in the rigging and stuff like that. The gremlins. So he exercised the demons, as, yeah. uh, <laughs> as Matt Rutherford would say. Um, yeah, and, and we managed to go out for a, what I would call a, a nice sail, but in difficult conditions, and it was bloody cold. And yeah, it wasn't a comfortable, relaxed sail, put no. it that way. Um, had that been my first sail, I don't think there would have been a second. 
<laughs> it, was, it was hard. It was hard going. And we were out there for a good couple of hours. We went right out. But the further out from land you go, the more the acceleration zone there was zipping through the channel from like northeast and just picking up kind of uh, speed as it went. Um, but it was all right, you know, we got back in one piece. Um, oh, also, the, it was supposed to be 20 knots gusting 27, mm. and it was more like, at one point it was like a continuous or a constant 36, 37 for a good while. So it was, it was a little bit off the forecast. It was, but that's what you get with forecasts, yeah. you know. And and like I said to Faye as well, this is this is these are conditions that were ideal for what we were doing, which is training with Ollie. Yeah. Um, but you know, if that was us just looking to go out from you know port to port, we wouldn't have chosen those conditions to go out in. But if we do get caught in those types of conditions, then we know what to do, you yes. know. And 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 I've sailed in. We both sailed in those types of conditions before. But when you're refreshing yourself and you're trying to get rid of the cobwebs, it's good. It's good to be tested like that. I mean, it was outside of our comfort zone, so that's where the magic happens, and that's where that's where you start to learn things. Definitely. So good day, but tough day, yes. and both in bed by seven o'clock last night, <laughs> sleep by quarter past nine. You know, so a good day really. It was, and today's been good as well. So tomorrow. Back out sailing. Back out. It's going to be windy. Forecast 20, 20, 20 knots, gusting 27 from the same direction. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see if it's as off as it was last time. Yeah. <laughs> Tested our depth sounder um, to take into account the keel. So it should be 1.7 under the keel. Um, let's go and find out. And when it touches the bottom, you'll really, really notice it. Three meters. Okay, should be soon. Yeah, so just under four meters. So it, is yeah, it looks more like 3.9, doesn't 9. it? 3.9. So the, the, the keel is two, and then you've got 1.7, so that is 3.7. So it should be there. Yeah, it's there. Yeah. So you've got 20 centimeters extra. Another job we had that day was learning how to put up our cockpit enclosure. I'd like to make a joke about how many skippers it takes to put up a tent or how long it takes three skippers to do it, but the answer was far too long, but at least the sun was shining and we had a good laugh trying to do it. success. Now if we see a few days of heavy rain on the forecast, we know what to do.
just when you thought the boat was tidy more boat jobs begin so it's our day off but we have so much to do <laughs> i'm gonna fix the toilet seat Woohoo! and you are sorting the toolbox I am sorting the toolbox. we are gonna attempt to make some sense out of the four peak when we were sailing yesterday and um, all this stuff got thrown forward so that we couldn't actually open this door um it needed a good old shove to actually get in there <laughs> good job. yeah um and then hopefully we might do the netting today but uh it's absolutely chucking it down which which means i'll have to get my foulies on it's a very gray day uh, and and, and the what? heavy rain has also given us an opportunity to find all the leaks coming from the hatches Yay! of which there are quite a few leaky hatch leaky hatch leaky mast leaky hatch leaky, <laughs> leaky hatch leaky hatch so many jobs Fixed it. Ta da. Na -na. My first section. It's a bit uh it's a bit messy to be honest, but it was sort of a test section to work out what I was doing and work out the measurements because for the length you have to multiply or you're supposed to multiply by 1.3, which I did and it was just too loose and too baggy, so I've tried to tighten it up. And you can see I need to trim those bits. This is all for the dog, by the way. We're dog-proofing the boat. <laughs> um, and you can see my uh, rope work wasn't very neat there, but it's it's better over there. Once I've trimmed those excess bits off, that's going to look okay. Um, so I've gone from the back stanchion to the front of the gate, and then there's that huge forward section going right up to the bow that I need to continue contend with. And, of course, everything on the port side. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side, back stanchion, through to the gate. Let's see if I can do this a bit faster this time. Seven hours later, the netting is done. Well, it's not actually done because we ran out of string for this section. <sighs> so the netting is nearly done. I'm gonna go have a glass of wine. The next day, Ollie took Rob and I on a sail to Rye. We were joined by Craig and the school boat Kildakin, and together we sailed east. The seas were flat and the wind calm. It was just the tonic after a couple of days battling winds up to 48 knots, rolly swell, and not to mention engine failure. We hoisted our Northumberland flag a little fabric piece of home that would accompany us on our voyage around the UK. As the sun came out, we were treated to views of the cliffs of the south coast and enjoyed using the full rig. No need for reefs today. It was strange motoring up a river, something I've only done once before on my day skipper when we motored from Royal Keys up the Tyne into Newcastle. We stopped for a quick bite to eat at the William Conqueror. But all the while, keeping an eye on reach out. The tide was already on the way out, so before we knew it, it was time to unwrap from Kildakin, slip our lines, and head back. This was all underwater when we arrived. Our trip to Rye was the perfect end to our few days of sailing, but now the training wheels were off 
and it was time for Rob and I to go it alone. With a little help from our new crew member, of course. 